Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Just a quick one to let you know that I have a brand new Patreon page. Come and support this channel and get your hands on dozens of procedural materials. Okay, let's dig into this distressed copper material. For those of you that are interested, here's the scene setup. I just have a plane with a bevel on it as a background. Three point lights pointing to the object. They're in fact tracked to the object using the uh, constraints. And obviously the camera so that we can see what's going on. So if I switch over to the shading tab, I've got the camera view and also viewport shading enabled. And of course, as ever, I'm using the Cycles Render Engine and my graphics processing units to do all the thinking. So this is the scene and this is the finished material as it stands. There's only a thousand samples happening here, but you can still see there's a lot of detail going on. So let me switch over to the tutorial setup and get rid of this preview so that we have a basic object. I will click on new to set a new material. Now if you're um, if you start a new material and there's nothing appearing he here, move your cursor into this area and press A and the period key on your keypad and that should bring everything into focus. Now this is the first in the new series of tutorials where I'm using the new principled BSDF node. So we'll take a close look as that at that as we're working with it. Our basic options are up here and then we have a variety of other settings down the bottom that we'll look at. First things first though, we're going to grab a texture coordinate by pressing Shift A, searching and just typing in texture coordinate and placing that over here. Now we're going to use the object output and with Blender version 4 you can actually drag an output here and you'll see there's a plus symbol on the end. If you just release your mouse key, that will bring up the search bar automatically, so you don't need to press Shift-A for that again. We're going to need the noise texture here, so we'll grab that, and that automatically connects up. We are also going to need a second one, so we'll press Shift-D while that's selected and move that up. That's not going to be connected to the texture coordinate, it's just going to be on its own. Uh, from this top noise texture, we're going to grab the color output and then go for a color ramp drop that in here and that will get connected up to the base color on the principled shader already we've got some texture happening there we'll make a couple of changes here we're going to need a couple of extra um, points along that line and we'll move them to around about Let's say 0.5 for that, and let's say 0.8 for that one. Let me zoom in a bit closer so you can see better. Now for this first color, we're going to use a hue of 0.05, saturation of 0.935, and a value of 1. So we have kind of a bright terracotta almost. We're going to move our cursor over that color bar and press Control c to copy that color. And we're going to select the end point and press Control v to paste it. <coughs> and then for these other two, the first one, we're going to go 0 0.05 hue, 0 0.935 for the saturation, and for the value, 0.475. So that gives us a darker version of that. And then for this other one, we're going to go for 0 0.05 hue, 0.765 for the saturation, and 0 0.008 for the value. And you can see that's a very dark brown color. And you can see what that's doing to the texture. It's giving us light and dark patches. Now that's it for the color. Now because we're obviously dealing with a metal, we're doing a distressed copper, we need this metallic value to go up. I'm going to put it up to 0.9. You can see that kind of gives us a shine, but with some roughness. Now the roughness we're going to control through that noise texture, the first one that we put on, and we're going to plug that into a Musgrave texture. So we're using one to distort the other. 
we'll leave those two settings as they are. We're actually going to bring this value into the scale as opposed to the vector. I'm going to put the detail up to 15, dimension down to 0, and leave the last setting at 2. And when I plug that into the roughness, you should see that what you'll get is roughness plus all of this swirly nonsense going on. There's a technical term for you. Swirly nonsense. Now that's not quite there yet because I do need to change the settings on this noise texture. Uh, we're going to put the scale at 2, detail of 15, roughness 0.75 and the last two settings we'll leave as they are. And you can see how that's roughened that out. It's not so swirly-whirly. It's more like scuff marks. Now the factor from this we're going to take and plug into the normal on the principal shader. But we're also going to need a bump node to convert that information into the relevant format. So the output from the factor from the noise texture needs to go into the height of the bump. And we'll set the strength at 0 0.02 and leave the distance at 1. So it basically just gives that rough area uh, like a pitting. So if I just isolate the bump node, you can see there's just some pitting and detail going on there. Now then, the rest of the settings actually come through the principled shader. So... We are going to start opening these. For subsurface, I'm going to change it to random walk skin. Although I'm leaving the weight at zero, so there's probably zero effect of that. The specular, we're going to go for GGX with an IOR level of 0.5. Uh, the anisotropic, we're going to go for 0.455 and the rotation 0.173 and this just basically changes how the light bounces off the object. Transmission we're leaving at zero because we don't need the object to light up. The coat, we need a coat on top of this so 0 0.038 for the weight, roughness 0 0.03 and IOR we're going to leave as it is. These are all very subtle changes, but they do make a difference overall. Uh, and then for the sheen and the tint, I'm actually going to leave those out, I think. Sheen. Yeah, we'll leave those as they are. That should actually be a zero fallow, uh, value on the emission. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Actually, I think that's it believe it or not. So let's just isolate these so you make sure they know what so you make sure you know what they're doing. So we've got the texture coordinate here which basically just figures out where to put this texture on the object. This noise texture is creating the roughness and the um, detail. That's being put through a Musgrave texture which gives you this kind of scuffed rough rough look and that's being used to control the roughness so you can see where the lights hit it, only the parts that are not affected by this are shiny. And that also, this noise texture here, not the Musgrave texture, is affecting the bump detail, so the, the raised areas. And then finally, this noise texture and this colour ramp are controlling the colour of the object. Now you could argue that you could pipe these through each other so that you get the noise in exactly the same place but I actually found that by doing this it gave a better result it's less uniform and more random which you would probably have with distressed copper anyway let's quickly render that out and you will see how that looks just going to go to uh, this max bounces we're going to go for direct light And there was one other change. That was it. Oh yeah, just using tiling to render. The sampling for the render we were at 1024. I can probably get away with half of that. In fact, 
probably a quarter of that, so 256, because I'm using denoising. And if I go for 0.1 here, we should be all right. And there you go, there's a distressed copper look. Now it's quite heavily denoised, so it's very smooth at the moment. If you want more detail, obviously increase your samples and reduce the threshold. I'll quickly show you where that is. So you're decreasing this noise threshold. So 0 0.05 would give you more detail and samples would give you more detail as well. And there you go. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that one and find it useful. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe and join me next time as I redo all of the materials for Blender version 4. Thank you.